Start streaming now. Yes, Mr. Wit from Wit, you are perfectly right. It is time. Hey, 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 crazy challengers. I'm gonna be with you guys in a minute. The Mr. Trickshot guys are not ready. For the real deal, baby. What do you think we're doing here? Playing with toys? What's up everybody? How are you doing today, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Admarius Magic. Welcome back to the card table with expert card technique by Jean Hugar and Frederic Brouet. Today, we're going to talk about changes, you know? But not the changes we are all going through in a quite dramatical way with the society these days all over the place really crazy things are going on I'm telling you brothers and sisters this year is really a freaking challenge I just looked at the topic today about card changes the top change especially and its variations and its use cases and we did talk about it of course in last year's session um, on the Royal Road to Card Magic let me show you this where is it this one here this video this one will give you pleasure and as you can see I'm talking here about Google is fined about 170 million violating children privacy stuff remember last year I had a real hard time last year because I got sink, uh, sucked into the whole um, polit political thing about the copyright issues and stuff on YouTube as a YouTuber. And I said to myself, this year, I'm going to focus fully on Plank, on the on a, on a, uh, on a, on a content. Now, this year is crazy, you know, <laughs> with the uh, coronavirus, now unrest uh, in, in the United States. Uh, China build, building a, totali totali a totalitarian system or whatever, you know, a lot of things on my mind. But I managed up until today, and I will keep it up today, being focused on the cards. Isn't that great? I got a lot of books in front of me here. I got the uh, card manipulation. Well, let me go here. What's going on? Where is the, this one here? Card Manipulation by Jean Hugard, of course. I got the expert card technique and the good old Royal Road to Card Magic. Because with the, with the top change, we're going to talk about something extremely, extremely um, fundamental in card magic. From the whole concept, I try to focus, uh, I want to focus a little bit on, on the concept of the, of the top change or of card changes in card magic and then of course we're going to take a look at uh, some techniques there's a lot of different techniques out there 
designed for very different use case scenarios. And of course, um, I want to show you some that are not in the book, uh, also very classic ones. Um, it's going to be an epic session and I'm great. Everybody is tuning in. And with everything going on in the world, I just wanted to give you the signal. I'm not ignorant about what's going on, but um, I, I don't need any focus on this <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I hope you're all well. I hope you're all safe and you're tuning in with the same um, focus, the same need, you know, just to get to get the head clear and to focus on what's really actually, actually important. And that is uh, doing crazy things with playing cards, right? <laughs> At least for me it is. <laughs> so we got we got a lot of folks in the house. Let's see what's going on. Um, we got um, Nyo Smith in the house. Hey, Nyo Smith. Whitford Fritters in the house. Hey, Whitford Frit. Crazy Challengers also in the house. Chi Rob, awesome. Um, Chi Does Magic is also in the house. Hey, Chi, how are you doing? Um, Dallas Taylor, good at Marius. Good day all. Wonderful. That's great. That's a great start. So I hope you all got a, a deck of cards out and you make it quality, quality times for yourselves. Um, I had a blast of time once again, checking out what's going on on Discord. Look at this. Uh, Wit von Wit, he bought himself a, um, a haunted deck uh, version. Is it the latest? Is it the latest release? Because as a matter of fact, the other day, The other day I saw um, a, a product trailer advertisement for the Haunted Key and I, I really had to laugh because I said, oh, there's once again somebody selling the Haunted Key. That's crazy. Is it the newest version? I like it. It's it's beautiful because the version I got, they don't even, uh, they, they, they never bothered to, you know, to hide the secret. <laughs> It still works, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I got a performance up and running on my channel of, of the Hunted Key, uh, the Paranormal Activity Key. Yeah, yeah. And um, this is probably the dumbest thing and uh, the silliest thing and the shittiest thing uh, at the same time I ever uploaded on YouTube. But um, hey, I did it and I just, you know, I'm not gonna change it. It's gonna be there. So please uh, don't go and watch it and please don't uh, unsubscribe after watching it. <laughs> uh, great. So you're going totally nuts in a, in a, um, in the uh, in the dis in our Discord channel, and I love it very much. Uh, the, the, the ongoing discussions are really productive. Um, it's really great um, seeing you guys um, really getting to know each other, uh, sharing super valuable tips. And then we already have this d different um, rooms here. Um, everything double lift, uh, trick performances, practice. And I just saw that in our uh, uh, practice, I believe. No, where was it? In our uh, trick performances here. Uh, sh Shaded Glow um, sh showed a little performance he's working on. I haven't watched it yet, but you guys were discussing it and I love it. It's great. Um, it's really it's really um, um, awesome to see uh, this, uh, this engagement there. And the fun and the joy and the passion you guys have when it comes to card magic. Um, I, I'm not around so much just because time is a really, really delicate resource, you know. I've been shooting um, upcoming tutorial um, for for next upload. It's it's gonna um, be the um, follow-up on the Chicago opener and I'm gonna talk a little bit in general how the classic version of the Chicago opener um, compares um, with uh, my over-the-top version. And also I shot a, a Patreon exclusive uh, for best buddy tier which is available for all patreons uh, patrons for all maniacs um, i'm gonna i i, I just uh, um, had a, uh, a cold one and i was unboxing or opening up my guitar cases for the longest time and it was fun and it was really crazy so this is also coming up on patreon by the way once again uh thank you so much everybody for supporting me here on this platform um this is the membership what you see where you um uh, what you see when you become a patreon or even, even follow uh, shows you all your stats and then there is a uh, thank you clip you get 
Um, they are rebuilding their website all the time. Um, I'm just using this to um, upload the content and a little bit of the extra content. But of course, this is, and you, get all, you guys all know this, just for supporting what I do on YouTube so far. And you guys, um, you guys are totally killing it with your support. It's, it's because of that support that I um, s uh, stayed alive now for this year after everything that went down the, other, the, the last two years with YouTube and so on. So thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, right, right, right. So let's, uh, let's check in. We are listening to the Royalty Free Planet, absolutely amazing YouTube channel who um, collects Royalty Free Planet and uh, everything I'm showing you here on this uh, um, on my web browser is uh, is the web browser Brave, which is an amazing web browser, and I do um, promote it all the time because it comes with an inbuilt ad blocker. It is a high um, privacy uh, web browser, and it comes with an inbuilt crypto uh, wallet and cryptocurrency payment system, and all these are all answers to problems uh, for YouTubers and maybe for the whole internet. And you might want to check it out. You find all relevant, all necessary links in the info box as usual, and all the other serious re relevant tutorial series and videos in the info cards also of course right that's it that's the uh that's the uh, that, that's the, the the whole context from the youtube perspective so let's dive into the card table uh into the cards let's uh, go to the card table here so i just want to read a little bit here from the from the the Royal Road to Card Magic, just to just to get the uh, the, the, the the first uh, uh, passage here from the chapter on top and bottom changes from the Royal Road to Card Magic, just that you get a feel what is how kind of you know um, you, you definitely hear the the same authors, but there's so so much of a of a shift of the transformation already happening because this has been written 12 years uh, later than uh, what we're confronted with in the expert card technique. Um, which was published earlier by the same authors. So, top change. We we read there is no other slide in all conjuring with cards, which will give you so much pleasure as this. And it's kind of true. It is really fun. I want to talk about it, why it is, I am, I am, except for, um, or in addition to the reasons we, we're getting here. More than any other slide, it lends itself to improvisation, the de delightful ad-libbing with a pack of cards which causes so much laughter and, mo uh, and more nearly approaches a battle of wits with your audience than at any other conjuring maneuver. Um, so we are here in, in a very nice wording, um, pretty much um, confronted with the harsh reality of this being something that is extremely interactive. This is a this is a slide which is has no basically no as it's not designed. It's, it doesn't even um, consi consider this uh, being uh, performed uh, for the hands burning for the camera for, for a camera uh, ho holding onto it. It's something pretty much like the pass where you um, you do it in an offbeat, you do it hidden within misdirection, within the whole um, interaction with your audience. And since it's much easier from the just uh, from the mechanics, only speaking about the mechanics, it's an, it's a super easy thing, um, which is if you have a little bit of a performance experience, very easy to hide also. And um, Therefore, it is uh, an ex extremely powerful tool since you can do so many things with it because the change of one card to another is um, is getting really ahead of your audience for you know uh, producing um, beautiful effects in card magic. So this is the first thing we got to note. This is all about real performance situation. This is really about improvisation with cards impro almost really a free set of you know going um really um into kind of a um what do they say a battle of wits with your audience right to exchange one card for another boldly and under the very noses of those who watch without being detected it's a sweet triumph it's also good entertainment indeed robert houdin the father of modern magic observed almost a century ago i know of nothing more surprising than the effect of a card neatly changed the words are true as though written yesterday and this is still true today and this is beautiful about the whole um art form 
um, you see, I'm 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 coming here from a very wide focus before we go to to a to a narrow the down perspective. I don't know why this is not happening. Here we go. So um, it 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 has it it has been around for the longest time. It is so essential. It's so integral to to what we do in card magic. Now, pretty much the same introduction, but in a little bit of different wording. We read in um, on page 81 in um, Expert Card Technique, there is no more beautiful and effective slide in the entire range of card magic than the elusive move to be described in the following paragraphs. It is worthy of the attention of every worshipper at the shrine of Tarot. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> is that where we are? We are worshippers at the shrine of Tarot. That's great. That's that's so great. Uh, in this change, this is what the spectators see and what the magician himself will see in his mirror. So a synopsis now of the effect from the spectator's point of view. The conjurer holds a card in his right hand. The Six of Diamonds, for example. Momentarily, he holds it face downwards. Immediately thereafter, its face is turned to the spectators, who now perceive that the card they have watched closely has changed to, say, the Two of Hearts. Easy as that. So, we change one card to another. Now, the next thing I want to point out is, and this is really also very um, related to the first point I just made. It is very close to what we know as a color change, right? Basically, a color change is a card change that is a visual representation of the change. So when I when I have um, in my deck here, I don't I don't know what I got on top here. I got a king of spades, right? And when now, when I now change the king of spades with a color change, I might, let's see if I can do this in this angle, right? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the king of spades, the king of spades, and the king of spades changes into the ten of diamonds. I am in a situation where I do create the magical moment where the transformation is visually represented kind of the magic happens in the eyes of the spectators we talk about color changes a lot also on this channel and it is a topic you know cat magicians uh, study and spend a lot of time with there are many many different color changes because it is so freaking powerful and it re represents um, card magic in such a direct and clear manner um, it, a color change is more than a card trick. A color change is truly card magic. And it is basically the same technique, right? It is the same concept of changing one card to another. Now with the, with the uh, classic or with just a card change where the change is not visually represented, but we, have, we show one card because, yes, we have a... Um, break in the perception, we come back and then the same card changes into another card. It's a different concept. And um, this, uh, this concept of this, um, ch this change, um, which is not visually represented, brings with it a different notation, a different drive or a different, um, how you say, um, um, Mm, I'm lacking the words here. Uh, um, maybe style of the way you perform it. Just to have this uh, set this um, beforehand, um, and now I try to connect those both kind of worlds with the color change that uses the classic top change, so that when you learn it, you learn the best of bo both worlds. And this is what I want to get started with. And it's beautiful that we have it here in Expert Car Technique. So let's see. Um, uh, 
crazy challenges, right? Yeah, I'd argue that the top change is the best color change because when executed right, the actual change happens in the spectator's mind rather than in the magician's hand, right? Um, yes, here's the thing. Um, yes and no. Um, a well-performed color change, and also there are there are um, uh, different uh, techniques to to create to read to to, to add the version we're going to talk about um, in a second um, enables you to actually have the the, the transformate to, to visualize the transformation so that the onlookers can look upon it happening which is the most powerful magic that's that, that is the that is the most uh, powerful magic in the sense of what is possible to create as a visual illusion with cards however as we all know or as you learn when you study magic that the that um the effect the illusion is um happening in the minds of the spectator it's a construction of the mind of the onlookers um in um how do you say after in, in, the, in the memory this change that happened without them focusing on it might be much more um m m might be a much stronger memory and uh, i i believe it was and i i happened to to um end up watching this more or less accidentally um richard bellows um, has some videos up and running on his youtube channel about um his work on the bertram change and he would um, talk about this very topic um, that the, the, the po most powerful color change is the one that happens or the card change happens in the hands of the spectators. So you give them an ace of hearts and they, they have it. And um, at the point where they receive it, they are completely convinced that it's the ace of hearts. And then you just use the time in between to, um, uh, to really hammer this experience into their head. And when then they open the hand and they find the card change, this this is um, absolutely disrupting the concept of reality from their perspective, right? So I agree. And but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. It is a question of what you wanna um, what you wanna achieve and what you wanna do. And I really love to perform a color change, the classic Erdnest color change, because it's so much fun to do and it's such a classy move, and people really enjoy it. And with a classic Erdnest color change, I'm setting myself up for um, for for an ambitious card routine, or you can I can put it in there or whatever. It's it's something that you know gives you a lot of options, just like the the top change or the card change here the um the first version we got so let's let's talk mechanics here if 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 we will are you guys with me are you guys with me yeah so to the card table So now let me, and we are right now a group of 16 people and um, at the moment what I'm always saying is I'm hiding here in plain sight. You guys support me with your pledge on Patreon. You guys mean um, serious business, I know this, from what you deliver, from what you, from the way you present yourselves on Discord. So I decided um, I'm going to share some um, some, r some really, really, really fundamental, really basic, uh, um, not in the sense of uh, easy or basic, but really, really um, uh, um, straightforward um, knowledge about how to handle this uh, the sucker, um, which which is uh, which you only get on on uh, on a basis of years of, of of practice and and experience with it. So. Of course, you have to hold a very light and loose grip in your hand. That's the first thing in your left hand, right? Um, which is something um, you will find if you if you notice this, because um, performing actually performing magic in real life situations. Once again, this is the reference point here. This is this because this is the move. Let me show you the move. This is what you do, and you 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 don't need to do anything faster, anything crazier. Um, if you are working in the real world with real people, right? Can you can do this a little bit faster? Yeah, a little bit faster. 
But basically, that's it. And it's all you need. It's just like the past. I told you this. You would. You don't need more than this, because th this is happening uh, in the in an off bit. This is happening when nobody is watching. This is happening because the design of the trick, because the build of the routine, is. Um, is hiding it already then the, the pattern your narrative the story the employment is hiding it and then um it all creates a misdirection which is uh, uh, bulletproof and the, the window of opportunity you have um in a in a group of people surrounded by a group uh, by a bunch of people it is an, an amazing it is like um it's like a uh dark hole like a, like a spot of emptiness there is no attention there like that whatever happens there nobody nobody will see timing that is right and th the experience uh, performing a magic camp that this timing um uh, becomes something of course natural because you you're going to be you're going to you need to figure out what it is you need to be very observe uh, up, uh, up, uh, observing and um uh, really um being in the in the situation really focused to 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 gain the experience it's just maybe like learning an instrument you know at the beginning you uh, uh, tri, tri, and you, of course you got to learn the, the the necessary uh grips uh, and you practice, you practice, you practice, and uh, at one point you play music, right? Um, and it, it's just the same here. So a loose hand, and this is one of those things why these things are so um, so difficult for beginners because you're in a stressful situation, and the key of it is to be completely loose. And when you're stressed, you're not loose, right? And it's just it for me. It transfers sometimes from the shoulder down to the to, down the arm into the hand that i'm really i'm having i'm my, my i'm you know i'm just almost forming a fist because otherwise i would start shaking and if you are if you are tensed here if you are tensed here you will not be able to make this move anyway you just don't ca ca come together because the key of it is, is to be completely relaxed completely relaxed in both hands and all what you do is pushing the left card a little bit forward that's all you do, right? Just a little bit forward. Now the left hand holds the cards very loosely clipped between the thumb and the uh, index finger. Very like this, just very loosely. Now when, the, when, when you come, you, you can let it go here. And what you do, you let it go while you slide it in and immediately the, the, the thumb takes over here. Now so this, this would be the first notion, right? Or you almost throw it, it's very light. But at the same time, the index finger contacts the bottom card and it does this motion with the thumb. So what you do, you're holding the card like this, you throw it over and my index finger is already here and then, then it's this motion, right? This motion. Practice this. And you got the two cards. So, the, the, so they come together you slide it in, left thumb takes it a little bit, right takes it away. But it is really that at this moment, here at this moment, when, when I'm here, without the left thumb receiving it, I change the, I change the grip. Do you see this? Let me show this very slowly one, once again. I'm coming here, and now I change the cards in the hand. Now they are already changed. I can't let this go. And this is very light. It is from the mechanic, from the mechanics set, relatively easy. If you once got this this transfer going if you can do this yeah let it drop here doesn't matter if you can do this the thumb here just becomes a collector so you push this forward you come you transfer right there now this is something you have to practice a little bit for some time but it is you know compared to the past or something you know if the past takes you three months this will take you three days, right? Now, the next notion, which is extremely, extremely important, is that you will not want to move the hand. You shall not move the hand in which the card changes. Because it is just the causality of picking shit up that the hand goes somewhere, picks it up and brings it back in. 
right? Das ist ein basic movement. And it has an extremely strong representation in our minds. Because arms moving up and forth, they can represent, they represent the, the social foundation. Giving and taking something or um, being attacked and protecting uh, attack. So when you move a hand and something changes, the, the motion of moving will be understood as a part of the change and the illusion is ruined. However, if you don't move the hand and the card changes, it's magic. It's as easy as it is. So, even though spectators do not spot or the, the, the actual card transfer, if you do this, you see uh, um, an exchange. Look at this. You see the exchange. Now, if I do this, the exchange is now still visible, but you see the difference. I do this once again. Isn't this crazy? Yeah? The object in the hand that doesn't move, you almost can see it, you know, saying, I'm the same. Like, I'm the same. <laughs> yeah? Compared to, I've been changed. I've been changed. Very simple. A uh, kind of uh, psychological representation of what is going on. The brain is actually very good detecting this. Because it is uh, in its root relevant for survival. So, what you gotta take from here is whenever you do top changes you want to have the position of the change the, 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 you want the, the change happening in a manner that um, the card is uh, rather taken away then uh, no that the, that, the, that the change is brought to it rather than taken away right bring it on do not take it away bring it on So you will find in a lot of explanations on the basis of what I just um, explained to you that you hide the motion in a shift from left to right because of, of because this of course is used most of the time in kind of a standing situation table worker somebody stands at the table and kind of works down to people or um, somebody stands around people or even if you do if you're seated um, and uh, once again this camera angle here doesn't deliver anything of it it's a different um, situation in a real life performance I am with people now I have people let's let's give let's try um, to go into this here maybe this is the the closest thing of what you have when you're talking to someone in, on, on the table but still the, the the frame of what you what the person actually sees uh, completely differs from this shot here right but anyways i would sit like this and my hands would be more natural more down and i have people and to, and to the left and to the right in front of me and then i have, have one card in my hand and i move from right to left and i don't um this um, motion brings naturally both hands together and if I just keep on going this brings the hand out if this hand stays steady and this hand goes any somewhere else this becomes almost invisible and the notion here is completely now of course I'm showing you this but believe trust me this this little this sucker here goes goes out goes out of the field of sight when it's more down and when you're just shifting al uh, just alone, usually it goes, when I do it or when you do it, it goes, you're down for some reason. You have to establish the card. So you bring the attention to the card. The card is, that's the card. 
but you do this, of course, not so drastically, but just for the uh, reasons of exp explanation here. Brings to the to the to the, uh, the attention to the card, and usually the attention is down to the card. Attention is uh, with the hips, you know. Now you turn it over from this. You bring your attention up to one onlooker. This is a major shift in perspective already, and then you go to, to a person from from front or from uh, uh, um, to right to the left. Am, am I right? And this is where it happens. So what happens in spectator mind is blackout, blackout. Um, trying to follow what is happening in this move, and this is that there is this that the people do not see what's happening. They don't even, they, 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 they forget for in this moment even that you're holding a deck of cards in the hands. And it doesn't matter. As long as you don't bring any attention to this fact, what happens is the next time you come back to the cards, the, the, um, the, the mind just assumes that it's the same card. And it will never question uh, uh, th th that there has a change happened, right? And of course you can do this extremely boldly at the point where you want to and we're going to talk about this later in this uh, version here of the throw uh, throw over card you can do the you you can do the change by uh, in a manner and i've seen um people doing this um when you and of again this is just like to sh to show you here what i can show in the setting actually um where you would um do the do the shift uh, let's go down again here this is so uncomfortable where you would do the the shift and you want to give the card to, to someone so you can you you could come back you could come back um where you bring it together um while you bring the attention up to someone and then, and then you would come with your left hand to the front and say open up your hand right so you would go like like this open up your hand you already changed the card now they open up the hand and then you put the card in the hand for example undetectable if you would burn it with a camera the way most working professionals perform this really shitty from a me mechanical point of view <laughs> why should they put any effort in it because um it works anyway so light grip card is transferred basically yeah this is how to transfer how you can practices also ah man like this right cut and you see if you get this motion here very small then you get it see that my thumb is al almost not m motion moving just the same motion here I just pick up the pickle card and let the other one go and then you bring it in here and then you le le leave, let your right hand stay steady right and then you integrate this this motion into from right to left or from left to right or from in up out and you're done you did you, you you mastered the greatest and most important um thing in uh card magic and you're ready to set up to do to work wonders and miracles thank me later the question is how do you use it the question is um how to gain the experience to put it actually in place but i believe some of you are doing really well performing working on their routines being super bold about it i love it you're going to be great if you're not already great great magicians so now let's take about using this technique here in uh in, in for a color change and this is basically you transfer the whole motion from here to there so we're here and you'd make it go to there now from the <laughs> from the diamonds to the hearts that is a, that's a color change that sucks let's do it from the king from the seven to the king right so we're here no yeah so we so we're here or where, where are we we're here yeah right we are here and we, ah now i messed it up you see now i got the right card we are here we are there but of course not in this angle but in this angle so i bring this two cards in this motion i show the card you come back down and then you come up up to the chin and then you make the transfer now let me show you this with the camera under camera angle and it's the same thing it's the same technique but now you turn this 
uh, like a mad person into a color change. Now it's really, really difficult. Let me do this standing up because I would be here. I would be here. I would show the people, look, I've got the, we got the seven of diamonds. I come and I do the transfer like this, but up to the chin. And I like to say, look, um, this is the world I'm living in right now. I, th oh, this is the world I'm living in right now. Cards change from one to another. This was very poorly performed, right? But like this. And I'm going up to this, so the change, the change goes um, from here to here. My face. Look, the card changes. Now you see, just to give you this example, at the point now, I'm just. I want you to to get you the, the idea of what is happening. When I do this with this, oh my! I got it's all uncomfy, uncomfortable. It's it's really pain in the ass. So I'm st I'm stressed out. I'm 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 not eased. There there is no way to get this really buttonly smooth. Needed to, ch to change the camera, to go further away, you know, to get this. But it works with how people follow. And in this situation here, and this is so, this is the most beautiful thing. It is like that the, that when we are down, we are up, I say the color change, and the whole attention goes with the whole motion. So you look down, you come, you look with the whole thing up. It's like, you know, sliding up a ramp. And this is a motion blur that's happening in the perception. So when you do this, um, people do see the color change. They see a change and it blows people away. It's it's the, really one of the most beautiful color changes. This is how they explain it in the book. And it's really worth reading it. So let, let alone if you if you take those things and just explained how to how to do the, the the mechanics in the hands, you know, and how to integrate it and move it. If you integrate it into this motion, you get you. you this is we're done here. This is a lot of material, a lot of um, working material. This gives you really something at your hands, which is um, yeah. You can really get creative with it. You can get, you can get, you, you can improvise something like this whenever you like. You know, you can um, um, get into this witty battle with your audience. And I have, um, I once, I perf um, had this uh, little um, 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 ambitious card um, <clears throat> color change routine in this um, street magic. A video I, I shot two years ago, something with Mo Jones from Mo Tricks TV. This is a little bit goes a little bit into this direction of this witty battle with your audience. So um, <clears throat> there are other changes in the book. I don't want to um, spend any time on um, Hugard and Bruet do. Um, I know, introduced them also kind of skeptical. Um, at one point in the book, they say that the um, top change is a slide that has been known for the longest time. But there has not been really a major breakthrough in the evolution or in the in the um yeah in the evolution of the of the um, basic fundamental technique because it is it is it is what it is for and it uh, serves its purpose and so there is no actual really need to go into um changing it into improving it the improvement um just w will happen in your hands by itself since it is something that just works in uh, natural performance situations um you will and and this is something very personal in magic because everyone has a different tone everyone is a different persona a different person and there are so many nuances in social interaction with human beings so to make this work for yourself you will get your you will work you will you will have to work out your own um, um, your own version on the basis of course of what um, is true for everybody so in that sense it's always the same and yet you have a thousand variations of the same thing 
The throw top change, for example, is something that um, takes now here, and this is something I never um, uh, really used myself because if I want to change a card, I throw it another, I, I change, if I want to change a card to have it end up on a the table, there are other, uh, other versions to do it. But the throw top change would be, but still it's nice, you know, still it's good to know. And um, it, it's, it's you have one card in the hand, you want to change it to another while you throw it onto the table. And um, who got in Brewer, they'd say it like that, you throw it with the left hand, and as you throw it with the left hand, um, like this, yes, you throw it with the left hand. That's, that's how I read it the first time, you throw it with the left hand, and at the same time, you place the other card, which creates the illusion of, um, of the card uh, thrown on your hand. This probably needs to go in a swing and needs a much bigger motion, general motion than I have. So it would be something like this and your right hand gotta, gotta end up delivering while your left hand moves away. This is also, I believe, how they explain it. When I um, um, was first confronted with this, I was thinking, wouldn't I do it like, wouldn't I rather do it like changing the cards and then throw it, something like this? You know, so I'm in this action anyways. I come and I, I I would lift up my angles a little bit in this big motion and throw it like this. Probably this is how I would how I would uh, wanted to do it. So I, and I as I say again, I've never really used this, and um, I have I am I'm, I'm just you know jesting around now how I would work this so that maybe you can see how you work things out for yourselves. So what feels natural to me? How does it look like? What how would I anyway from this position? So I'm showing. A card, um, throw it on a table. It would like, like, it would look something like this. I would go with this hand out of the way to throw it on top, or to throw it away from me, right? Probably. So there is a reason for a movement in my left hand, you know, to to make place here and throw it. So I just have to connect this uh, these put two motions, use use this moment for the top change, and then throw it. This kind of works for me now. And also, what they write in the book is that when I um, when I move from right to left or from left to right, um, this helps me really cover it. But you see this now. If somebody does does this um, with with a nice pace, without any interruption, under cover of all the misdirection we just talked about. And I'm, by the way, I'm just when I'm looking up there, I actually do look to my hands, right? You know, because I've got the monitor right, right up there, in, on my screen, right? So you see, now I'm using the same thing we used to create a color change. We're using this now to, to change the car. Isn't that lovely? Are you with me, guys? Are you? Do you value the shit that I'm sharing with you guys here? This is a master master class. This is how the real, the like, this is how the pros do it. And as you can see, first it's a practice of the general motion. You try to get this into a natural motion, and then you will not, you will not. You first need just the exchange, then you need the exchange in the action. And then you need to focus on the action because this is where the people follow. And the more you focus on the action with the praxis, when I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm focusing on this. I focus on this motion. This is where I want to get it. Change the card. Like this. Bang. Yes. Like there. Look at this. How this starts flowing with the cards face up. With a little bit of practice, right? How this starts flowing. So I'm enjoying myself right now because I've never used this. I'm just getting, trying to do this. This is how you do this properly. So I'm just, I'm not going to just stand up here and got to try this. I'm talking to people. I'm saying like, look this, I got a two of diamonds here in my hands and I come here and I throw the two of diamonds on the table. Look at this. Now you see both worlds, you know, you can see both things here. And we, I got a, too much light here, but you uh, blend it away. You shouldn't see it anyway. Imagine now, here, when, when I'm in this position, my attention goes up with the people. I'm going like, I'm, I've got the card, I'm throwing the card on the table. And in the moment where I do this, 
Reddit. Shortly before I do this, my attention goes up. So this thing, people looking up, I'm going here and then throw the card on the table. The key, the key, what you want to practice or what you what you want to achieve, is a soup is the net is a natural flow, a natural uninterrupted casual flow of motions. That is the it's not speed. I'm always saying this. It is not the invisibility in the sense of people looking at and not seeing it. That, those people who focus on this, because a lot of times people think it's the invisibility when people look at it. They try to create it by with speed. So people who work into this direction are people who have no understanding of the basic concept of what 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 is happening, what what we are doing actually when we when we try to create illusions. Everybody who goes thinks into this direction, get away from this road. I'm just telling you, a casual flow of motions and an understanding of when and where your the attention shifts of your onlookers. It's the shift itself that creates the window of opportunity. And it is, it needs to be meaningful. It need, needs to be reasonable. As soon as they, 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 they come to the, po to the point where the attention falls so that you can present the effect and there is a single interruption to this way, it will ruin the effect right and when they just have been watching at your hands all the time you have been doing something wrong like terribly terribly wrong you do perform extremely poorly when people just watch at your hands does it feel natural if you throw the card the opposite way to the deck you mean like this to the inside do you, you mean like this to the inside? I, <laughs> so yeah, of course. So you come here. Um, so you mean you do this now in the offbeat? You throw this in front of you? I think so. Um, here, this is look. When you're dealing cards, right? You deal the cards to the position of the people, and the one that goes to you, you that usually deal straight down forwards. Even sometimes it's even in front of you. You know, usually people. Also, this is another thing. <laughs> with the space you're working with. So dealing the cards and the card you deal for yourself, you would also deal in front of you, kind of. So I think it would feel, it, it feels, it feels unnatural to throw it to the, to the inside. Especially if you want to give it to the people, if you reach out to the people and you want to give it to them, you throw it out there. By the way, I'm planning to do a tutorial on, um, on how to deal cards. I've seen some, I've seen such bad handling lately. I've, I just said, I need, I need to cover this one. Um, ah, everybody's talking about um, bottom deals and bottom steals and double lifts uh, and um, uh, 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 seconds and, sh and shit and I've, man, and nobody knows how to deal cards. Are you kidding me? <laughs> So there's going to be a basic tutorial in our tutorial series on table work where we're going to talk about um, how to properly, uh, properly deal cards, right? In order to um, manipulate them. Believe me or not, those are things that are really, really freaking important. So um, now let's talk another. This is, the, this is so rich what I'm giving you today, but this the chapter is so rich. We are in for 47, 47 minutes, dude, it's, it's going to be, I could end it here and I'm doing another session with it. Probably because this is very powerful. Now the, the last thing here, the drop switch, I, um, I didn't understand. So if anybody did understand the last chapter here, uh, it's page 88, uh, following uh, 88 to 89, the do drop switch. I, I had a I had a huge uh, um, uh, problem uh, problems understanding this. I'm just right now shocked because we got 48 minutes and there are two other techniques coming in this book which are equally um, powerful and relevant. Are you guys with me? You want to get this? You want to talk about this now, or would you would you prefer to um, 
to do this uh, uh, in two weeks because you say I have um, already now enough to um, to to um, to to deal with. You know something to to look forward to because I believe um, um, somebody wrote in a, in Discord they they feel um, a little bit. Here, um, right. Um, I like wrote um, in Discord. Let me show you. I, I like wrote in Discord here. Um, looking forward uh, to your approach to this chapter. Has everyone done their homework? And then Wit von Wit writes, it's, I sadly have not. I'm still messing with the shuffles and cuts, right? So, um, and I also, um, I also like, I like this honesty, guys, you got. It's really, really, it's really, really important. And in the, in the, um, in the, okay, you know what we do? Because night is a strike camera rights. Um, either way, I will just give a little where this is going. And then we go deeper into this in the next session. We just cut this one in two because it is really, it is so, and I will repeat myself, um, uh, on purpose, purposely, because you know, we have to really get this in our, because you have to repeat this, to, I have to repeat this to myself, even to myself all the time. It's freaking important. Um, I sadly have not, I'm still messing with shuffles and cuts. The honesty. You know, that's why I'm always saying, cover the basics first, you know, learn how to shuffle, learn the cuts. It's, um, it's that comes f first and then there comes the other thing. But this is still, um, this is the next thing on the road. Like the top change, it's because it is easy, relatively easy from the mechanics, but it is absolutely essential in the live performance situations. Now with a set of basic fundamental cuts, right? And shuffles with your basic tricks, you can integrate this one like into the color change or you can just try to switch the cut because you can do it anytime. There's nothing in between. There's, there's no worries there. And then you practice this, this psychologically super stressful thing with ease. And, you, and then you just, before you know it, and this is by the way how you, how you practice forcing as well. Be, there's no risk to losing it if, if you don't if you not succeed, but you practice the technique and then there comes this moment and this is uh, this is so freaking crazy. Once once you realize how much time you actually have, how huge the window of opportunity is, the stress level will drop drastically, and uh, then you can um, start really working um, start working those beautiful complex more complex routines where if you fail, you need a backup plan. Because now your whole setup is ruined. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Wonderful. So um, here is um, the, the, here's the thing. Um, and I, this has this, I believe it was this, um, uh, um, um, how do they, um, illusionist guy. There is this um, guy from illusionist. What is his name? He got the, he got these two ninja CDs or what they are called or weapon CDs and then, and he's working with this material and um I don't even know if he's referencing here but that's basically where it's and it's um this is the full impact of Charles Miller and um this is Charles Miller this um guy I need to go into much more uh, studies in there because the more I see. The, the 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 workings here, Charles Miller. The more I identify ident, identify, and it's it's not at any point um, uh, um, obvious oh, who, oh, who is who here. But you you just the thinking, the working. You can uh, you can uh, you get, you get a um, feel for it, and this these moves are absolutely. And there is this trick, and. Um, it's it's how is this called? I believe the Charles uh, the Danbury delusion. No, I yeah well, Danbury the Deviler, Danbury the Deviler by Charles Miller, right? 
There you've there is this this is on page. This is a read. That's a, that's a, that's a beautiful, powerful magic trick or magic routine. It's in this book here on page 307. This is where this is uh, this is and we're going to talk about this how you embed th something like this. And um so um basically it's um a card Right, any card that we have, we have we've got the King of Hearts here, and we place the King of Hearts right in the center of the pack. Right, bang, there it goes, and then we have a little bit of magic happening, and the King of Hearts comes jumping back to the top. So we have here a um, a, a card change, which I now um, used as uh, for the ambitious card um, routine. Right now, if you have by now. You should not be, if, if you don't know what it is, you should you, you should not be mind blown and going like, oh my God, how did he do that? You should, because we're talking about the concept, you should pretty, you put, should be aware about what this is, you know? Um, so we have the, um, a placement of one card up onto another, which is another really powerful concept. And in this case here, I've working with the bottom card. So I've got a, and I'm not showing you this, I'm showing you how it look, how it looks. I'm catching a, um, a break, a thumb break at the inner short side from the, uh, from the, from the package. I cut the top card. I show the top card and I have the thumb break drop on top. I've changed the card and then I can do whatever I want with it, you know, because from here you can of course also go, let me, let me, let me um, go back. So the card goes away and the king comes back. So break, card change, and then we can uh, work with the card like this, you know, the four of spades, right? Not so much. It's the Eight of Hearts, <laughs> right? The Four of Spades is here. Oh, there is this whole concept of card changes, which um, which goes into this direction of thinking. Let me see if I can do this. Oh man, I hated to work on the table. So I have a card change. My goodness, I have a card change, right? And I have a color change here. I show you this. I bring the card back on top and I have changed it again. Throwing one card on top of another card. Now the great thing about this um, move we learn here, the tip over change it's called, is that um, we integrate several elements in one motion so we catch basically and they don't even explain it here so we catch a pinky break and they don't even and we need to um have an uh under break so the the, uh, uh, the pinky needs to push the card up to create the break you want to have they don't even explain this once again we are here in the middle of uh or we, we are getting um into the middle knee deep in the middle with uh, hugat and Bruy. Need even an expert car technique. They, they, they do not. They don't. They, they, they don't explain. Uh, this is uh, what a pinky break is and how you catch a pinky break. That's just if you don't know it. You this is too far away. Um, um, because look at how big the sucker is. <laughs> so and then I'm in this position and now 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 I pick the cards up. I pick it from the break or I have a spectator choose a card and force them from the break. And now I catch the pinky break I was talking about, another pinky break with my right hand. And this is something um, that, uh, that, that, is, that is easier than you think it is, but it still takes some practice and I can't do this at all. So it's basically um, pushing the cards from this position here to the side like this and taking a break. Now I'm not getting it at all, which is crazy. So I come here and basically at the point where I, where I pick it up, I catch this break. And now you see how this looks like. I've never worked this. I just, I, this is the fir I, first time I heard about this one, catching a break like this. But apparently when I did this, the f when I practiced this two days ago, 
it, it was much easier. What was the neck out of it? Where is the neck out of it? Like, how did I do this? I did really... Is it the cards? Is it because of the cards? Or is, are my hands too small? Right? Uh, anyways, I'm catching a break at this point. And then I turn the card over. And then from here, I put, 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 uh, place the card. I want to know how to get catch this break now. Yeah, now I got it. There it goes. This is how you do this. Okay. Okay. Okay, now, now I got a break. <laughs> and then I let the break, when I when I take the card, change the card, I let the break go down. And I'm, I got my card changed, right? Only if you want to do this, only if you really say, I want to do this, you would go into this practice routine to get this way of catching a break. Now you've seen how I, how I did it. You see the flow of motions or the micro motions. So what I do, I need to position my index finger here at the outer corner. They say also you have to do it. And then it's the top phalanx of my second finger with which I pull the card little, like, like a glimpse to the side. It gets diagonal here. From here, I can have it jump off. And when I straighten out my fingers, I automatically catch the break. So this is the flow of motions, right? Now you've seen in real time how you work a sleight of hand move. So I just I just cracked the code here, right there in front of you. Those are the, mo the mo motions I have to bring into one flow move, micro micro motions in the moment where you go like, is this your card? Big, 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 this is where it happens. Like all of the strange thing things right now, which right now looks something like this. Now I got the break, very nice break, right? And this ha happens at the point where I say, here, you card, I got the break, I bring it over. Or you could even turn it over and do the whole thing while the spectators look at the card, right? Because now the, their attention is here. And then you bring it back, boom, and you let the card drop down there. Very nice motion. So for everyone who wants to learn this, keynotes, index finger here at the corner, phalanx of the second finger in my case, like the, like the, um, like the glimpse. Now I can't. I know now why I can't do it because I'm holding the car. The, the angle I'm holding this here right now does not allow the, what I had to do. What I, the, to to swing to the side with the fingers in order to get this break. So ah, this is a sucker. <laughs> now does make does it make me a little bit more human now that you see that also the great Ot Marius has to go through the shit you guys got to go through every day. <laughs> got the break again here. Like this, like this, and there we go. Ah, now... I... Okay, the, enough for this one. Gonna give this a little deeper. Now let's talk about the, the push and change. And this is something that Aaron Fisher worked his ass off or at least this is this is the the path this sucker came to me when you have your card and you place it in there you can place it neatly to the side i i i'm also this is something i'm not working so i hope i'm not flashing here but basically you are in this in this motion now i've been flashing you see what's happening but you come here you go like this and you bring the card to the side which cre creates this one this card being visible all the time and you push it in so super cleanly let me try this one more time we got a one card you placed one card in there and also you see right um catching a double and kind of a little snap a snap um motion as a convincer that is requirement to get to get even to get into this position So now I pull the top card out and swing to the left like this out to the left as my hand rotates which brings me in a situation that I now can push like in diagonal palm shift the second card the other card in there bang as I bring this further out so one card changes into another very powerful very beautiful 
Now this is just a basic technique. As a matter of fact, um, there is this version. How is this? Where you can use this. How did I use this? Right. Like this. You can do it like this also. Pushing it in. Right. Okay, let me show you this little, little uh, beautiful um, ambitious cut routine. Because I see Peter Luzowski writes, would love a breakdown of a full routine for a future video. Like how to implement a handful of these live stream techniques into a bang, bang, banger. Okay. Um, listen, my friend, my dear friend, what I'm delivering here for free on YouTube already is freaking fucking insane. Like taking all these little tiny elements, pu putting it into a bang, bang, banger and sharing it for free on YouTube is, is, is auto, -aggression, auto aggression. What I'm doing here right now is only because um, 12 people decided to support me financially uh, because they, um, uh, they, 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 their learning process seemed to be working well with me as a teacher. So the, uh, the, how you say, the, the, the request is pretty bold, my friend, but it is um, the right direction of thinking, though, because this is what it's all about. So let me read the one part in this book that I read every freaking time. And some of you might know what's coming now. We're talking about slides, right? So listen very carefully, everybody. At this late date, and this is also the late date of this stream with one hour and three minutes right now. At this late date, it should not be necessary to emphasize the fact that slides should not ever be used except as secret process in a course of a trick. To demonstrate one's ability in making the pass or changing a card, for instance, is simply to destroy the mystery of such tricks in which these slides are used later on. Where we have one of the greatest um, authors and um, uh, um, uh, performers of the art of card magic themselves discrediting 90% uh, of the people who are um, <laughs> uh, at least here on YouTube. And maybe even me a little bit, because what am I doing, right? Teaching magic for those who really love it and who really mean business and serious about it. So, Peter Luzgorski, you will find um, as um, uploads um, a trick, it's called the um, Chicago Opener, where I do have a performance of a super over-the-top version I added a video of a walkthrough of the mechanics of the super over the top version, which um, delivers 12 in-depth tutorials of basic fundamental techniques in card handling in order to perform a little bit over the top version of this trick. I just already shot it and I will have to do the final cut for a, another follow up video on this um, um, series where I will compare my over-the-top version of the Chicago Opener, also known as Red Hot Mama, or um, the world's best card trick with the classic version, um, with the version um, you, um, um, that uses only uh, the Hindu shuffle and a spread, for example, to do the whole thing. And I will um, explain um, and I will shift the focus at th this point very slowly to exactly um, of what it means to um, uh, to use to start using those techniques we have uh, been talking about now for quite a while here on this channel and as a matter of fact I did build my channel systematically very slowly because time is on my side since I am a magician that means with every day that passes, my wisdom only grows and I don't give a single fuck if the whole world goes up in flames um, because of um, the stupidity of the masses. <laughs> I have my books and I have my passion and um, I'm in the ivory tower 
of the philosophers. I got the keys, man, for the back room, so I don't um, uh, have to hurry. And I built this channel in a manner so that um, when I shift the focus, which reflects also my learning process, which is what I'm doing here at the end of the day, documenting my, my, my learning process, um, um, in becoming a master of the art, um, a drunken master of the art. <laughs> mm. Everybody who tunes in, who followed me along the road or who uh, happen, uh, happens to drop uh, in accidentally at this, at this point will be enabled to um, follow up, to catch up on the level we are going to be there then because I will not care about this, the, the basic techniques then anymore. We will go into, into in-depth, deep analysis of the psychological structures of the art form. And that is just the next level. And this is by far not the end because after we've been through this realm, we can actually, um, um, uh, we still couldn't, we still haven't even really um, grasped the reality of the, of, of the wideness of the universe of what magic is, right? This, this, this rabbit hole goes really, really deep, guys. You have no idea. It's really, we, I have no idea. I'm just like, I, and I'm just diving deep for very long, you know, and I lost my mind over it a long time ago. Maybe you've, you've, uh, you've, you realized by now, some of you. <laughs> right, I want to show you this. Let's, uh, so what do we got here? Um, the grip from the tip over change is very useful since you can do some next level card to impossible jacket pocket without palming. Exactly, exactly. That's what, yeah, exactly. For, for, uh, crazy challenges, you're right. Yeah, the go gold in these streams is worth every breath. Crazy challenges, here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that is Taylor. The personality makes the trick, not the mechanics. Uh, part of learning the stuff is learning about how to express yourself personally. That stuff can't be taught so easily. That's right. That is not that. This is at the point, uh, at a point of, um, at a certain point, the the, the uh, line between um, uh, d um, teacher and pupil blurs, you know. And we have crossed this line anyway all the time because this is an open space here. Um, d d I truly believe that the process of teaching is a process of learning itself, um, and. Uh, and it is a, an act of communication. It's not somebody saying this is how it is and everybody repeats just the same thing. It is really working working together on an, uh, on a goal and everybody tries to bring in the best they got, right? This is how this is just how it, this is how how civilizations are built, you know? The <laughs> Uh, excited to watch it. You work here is not going without appreciation. Thank you so much, Peter. I was just like, you know, sometimes you just gotta let, it, gotta, uh, gotta be a little cocky. But you guys are all good. You guys are really all good. I'm telling you all the time. Love your passion, says Night uh, Strike Camera. Thank you so much. World's finest drunk master. Wow. <laughs> Um, practicing your go uh, golden techniques daily, but not uh, able to piece any of those controls or felt shuffles into anything beyond an extent um, ambitious routine. Well, that is that is really also the challenge, man. Here's the thing: you just gotta be creative about those things, and you just watch how you how, just watch performances of how other people do it, or um, um, work with the um, with the routines. You've been offered in a Royal Road to Card Magic already, right? There are a lot of routines in the book to to get in, you know to get into the groove of how to do this. Yes, this move here, this is this uh, a crazy challenge I was talking about. You know, to get to catch a a break from here. You know, this move. Um, yeah. Now I re now I realize how freaking important this is actually. This actually is. Uh, it's a it's a bottom steal, right? Oh yeah, I remember that you can do this with the whole deck. Oh, there, there are different ways of bottom stealing. I like to steal. I like to steal from the bottom all, with two hands. Um, uh, here, this is connected. Um, this is how I steal from the bottom, right? And I can. Uh, I often use this steal for um, um, a card change. 
And if you do this also in a motion from left to right, also pointing, this is absolutely not to be taken. I, I use this sometimes to give them the cards. <laughs> this is a shitty angle for doing it. Give the, the, the pack to the spectator and do some magic and then the, they can't find the card and then I pr produce the card like this, right? And you can see the the change of a card is, you know, look, look, card magic is the change of cards. All the, that's what we do: changing cards, shifting cards, changing positions, bringing basically bringing them to a place where they're not expected. <laughs> that's that's. Now I got it. Now I now I finally know. I'm I'm done. I got it. Bye bye. So um, uh, how how did this how does this uh, routine work? Um, I did I believe I did it in a performance with this beautiful color change. I got this on my channel also um, Let's see if this uh, if I can get this working here. Let's do this with some uh, with a with the Joker With an ace of hearts and a Joker Right, let's see if I can do this here. So I've got a Joker on top of the deck I'm not getting it. This deck is too old, right? And when I pick at this up, I bring I bring the ace of um Hearts out. I've got this on my uh, channel as a tutorial in case you want to want to get this move down. It is um, uh, on my channel. Let me show you. Uh, la la la. This changes everything. Here it is. It just changes everything. Let's take a look into this. Sometimes I like to do this. Yeah, there I go. Explaining this move. Right, card change. Now, um, how did I do this? Now I turn the stack around probably. I have the card, I put the card in. The ace of, the, um, the, now the, the ace of, uh, ace of um, hearts, right? So the ace of hearts is very ambitious because if I push it completely flush with the deck, which I don't do right now, because if I would do it, starts immediately rising to the top of the deck. And you can see, I put this pretty, pretty high here in the deck. So allow me please to put some cards, hoppala. Allow me please to put some cards here on top of there, so, which brings the, the, the ace of a heart much more down. Now, if I push this now into the deck, you will find something something extremely crazy is happening. The, the ace of heart starts uh, moving to the top as I speak. You can see right now, as I speak, the ace of hearts moves and it's just a matter of seconds now that the ace of hearts now comes to the top, right? And of course, from here, we are um, enabled to um, to to go into a, to another round, right? To let's see if I can do this with this angle here, because this is what I really like to do. Like this, I place the ace onto the table because it's a, a card change, and then I change I change it already back to the fourth spades, right? A little now you now you now you Peter Luzgowski now you inspired me to do a little. To go into a little bit of a improm card change run here. Ah, what happened? What happened? Camera went off. Card change here. Now I got the card change right, and here's another move which is wonderful. Um, the Mexican turnover. You might have heard about it. You just turn the card over, and the next thing you know, <laughs> I <hate> it. <laughs> The next thing you know, you have changed the card again. Isn't that a lovely thing? Probably I will come up with a tutorial the other day. This is, for example, something that I love to use by um, uh, use really as a play to level up the audience. Because if you do this two times in a row, um, or even one time, and you have smart onlookers witty onlookers they will realize what's going on but yet it's a very nice move but sometimes it is good to perform something like this in a manner that you create the effect 
and people enjoy it very much, but they can they can uh, track you down and they, they get the feeling, the relief of they are not completely helpless with what it is. Because believe it or not, if you if you if you hit them too hard with too many uh, straddle fan things, um, they will not know how to de deal with you anymore. Because now now you you did some David Copperfield shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you want to give them you want to you know give them the the, the, the chance to, to 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 know to have known something you know but and it makes them proud but it doesn't ruin the illusion it's just really clever it's a uh, witty oh i've seen you change the cards there nice move man i got him there i got him there you know and uh, th this is how i use the mexican turnover and it's um it's always really funky to play with the people so crazy challengers where is the Mexican turnover explained in this book and why it's not in the, in the chapter of card changes? Are you kidding me? Please, tell, let me know what's going on. Yeah, I've just found it. I just found it. Where is it? In sundry slides? What does that even mean? What means sundry slides? <laughs> oh my god. Here's the problem I have with the book. Um to keep on to keep on going with this live stream. Um how do you know because sundry slides it's chapter 14 in the book down here. And you see the table of content, this book is so full. And then you have these slides and you have the Mexican turnover in there. Yeah, we got the spread card, we got the double face. Dude, man, they, 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 there's, there's all in it. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Thank you so much for the info. Thank you so much for the info. Just let, I just want to look into this right now. You see? Um... How, how badly prepared I am? <laughs> 128. So 128. Oh. <laughs> ne right, the next move is the spread call. I saw you guys talking about the spread call in, um, in, uh. Oh, this is just like freaking amazing. Oh, yes, the double face. Oh, my God. This book is as unbelievable. This book is I'm just freaking out here, man. I'm just it's so crazy. I'm I'm just going to enjoy myself for the on, on on this chapter here. Because um we got a new glide. We got here the side the, the glide from the side. As um establishing a break from a bridge. Transfer of thumb uh, count break to the little finger. Which is um, which is the uh, the foundation for um, for one of the uh, really beautiful. Uh, how is that? How is this? Uh, I I do it like this. Uh, that's that's how I get into pole position here. Um, crazy challengers. Uh, I've got a um, I got an ace of hearts, right? I place the ace of hearts right there, pretty deep in the deck. Is that correct? And guess what? With just a snap of my fingers, the ace of hearts comes jumping back to the pot. How is that pot? How is that called? I fuck, I just, I can't remember. How is it called now? Marlo tilt. The Marlo tilt, right? Marlo tilt. And to get to get into the, um, I, 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 there were some folks, I don't know, I remember back then, there, there were a, a discussion how valuable it is to get into the uh, Marlo tilt, um, uh, one handed with with the um, thumb count break. <laughs> um, I just know it's 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 I, I never really worried. It's something it's, it's some, something like this, you know, to get in there. Um, and I, it's just like for like getting ready for the double, you know. Why would you why would you spend your waste your time with the pinky count and everything for for real situations? If you just you know you just need the the the, the inner. Here, the the the, the 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 flash, the flash of the tip here at the at the top phalanx of the thumb. With this one, you can lift up a top card easy, easily. Right, tilt your wrist down, square it up, 
and you you're in and you you get the perfect thing you need to know right and you because you need the same amount of misdirection to do this one handed or at least you drop your hand in, in a manner and it doesn't it, it makes no difference for to onlookers and this is so much easier right this was my philosophy or this is my philosophy anyways and you know, look at this illusion look how beautiful this illusion is right and look we're changing you know in a way changing we're changing the card right we're setting ourselves up for a nice card change there we go bang it goes in there in, into the deck isn't that beautiful i love this move so much it's so beautiful <laughs> it is so beautiful it's just like you know and once again um there is so much this move here i don't have it down a hundred percent this move here you got the card and you you come in like this that was really bad i need to but, but like there the card is in plain sight all the time how can it change that's crazy yeah wonderful just wonderful and of course stealing the card from there or doing whatever it is but i wanted to go back to the mexican turnover uh, just to see the this beautiful the beautiful painting here or drawing oh this is so beautiful just look at this guys look at this can you get do i get this sharp here anyway which is beautiful let me try to do this in, with the other camera because yeah the, the, it has auto focus with this beautiful with the beautiful um circular motion here you see the circular motion now it's getting sharp isn't that beautiful i love these drawings i love this drawing so much they're so beautiful right and if you study magic this is what this is all what you got for the longest time to get somewhere to this place right <laughs> <laughs> uh, up, no no you shouldn't do it like that it's a beautiful move one two three ah but i'm really bad at it i'm really bad at it so one hour and 22 minutes guys marlo has some excellent work on the tip over change in his book off of the, uh, off the top i think the book is public domain uh, now but i i don't know um yeah okay um that's great i write this down um off uh the top malo so currently there's 12 folks watching now sebastian has sebastian hansel is tuning in hi everybody hi sebastian two images telling more than 300 words could well yeah, well yeah it's the combination you know it's it is the reading the reading is an integral uh, essential <coughs> process essential ingredient of the of the learning process but i'm wondering right now you know why did why did they why didn't they put the mexican turnover into the card changes because it is a card change i don't understand it and it is to just finish it you know with uh, smoothly you remember my um the introduction of today's live stream um pointing out the differences at, uh, and similarities of color changes and card changes and um again here we are in, in a situation where the card change uh, and the color change are very close together right because the car the card changes basically in the motion of turning turning around right sucked ah dude i have to i'm i'm not familiar with the slide 100 percent. this is something by the way you gotta really you gotta practice a little bit to get it butterly smooth right but you but you get the idea so it's the turning over and this is where the where the, where the change happens. it's really close right it's not a color change is it a color change it's not a card change either it's a card color change it's at the same time and that's why it is very very um interesting i would have all put this into cut ch into changes why not i don't know so now i just look up because nobody of you guys um told me what the word means this uh this the sun sundry sundry let's see sundry 
Ah, it's random. It's an <laughs> a diverse, different, verschieden, diverse, random. <laughs> Just stuff, you know. <laughs> uh, we have basically we haven't finished the book yet, but we we we're gonna publish it anyway. <laughs> uh, I love this shit. This is great. This is great. But you know, this is um, this is of course uh, uh this this comes with the this is just a part of the part of the of uh, of it all. Um, there 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 is so much material, and it's really. This is an impressive book if I think about uh, bringing it to putting it together. Uh, Expert car technique by Jean Hugard and Bruy. It is so rich. It's so full um, with the Royal Road to Card Magic, with expert car technique, and then um, a literature that goes into a specific directions. Maybe um, mnemonica or the art of magic, um, uh, or the way the magic way by Tamaris. Or um, you go for some sophisticated, minimalistic Aaron Fisher style, or you um, go into the, the world of gambling, um, whatever it is. These are this is definitely the foundation. This is the, the, you will find the stuff in the book. It, it's coming again and again, and eventually you will come across dudes who resell the old material. You know, um, as the latest uh, call, the latest thing. <laughs> Uh, but it uh, it all has been already published 1940 and it's great it's free and it's uh, super fun and it is a rich material yeah and then there's a discoveries but but which is also just random ideas put together so we have uh, a lot of um, random coming at us a lot of um 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 discoveries um i um i don't really know how to proceed from here um, I would just make up my mind, be, be a little bit, uh, you know, um, picky about wh what we're going to do. Um, for now, we just have been in this uh, realm of mechanics so far, but there are uh, also a lot of um, routines and tricks in there. However, uh, this um, would take and this does take much more preparation for a session like this because you act, because um, going uh, going into um, routining a trick is not only understanding it, finding out what are the knacks, what is really important. So I um, um, need to see how I do this. Maybe um, we talk about the ambitious card as the most uh, famous theme. We compare the version of the Royal Road to Card Magic with the Royal, with the with what is um, um, offered here an uh, expert card technique. Maybe this is an interesting idea to see what happened in 12 years from uh, expert card technique to Royal Road to Card Magic. Why did um, Hugat and Bray, um choose here in this context? What they did choose and. Um, why, why, why did they choose what they did choose in the context of the Royal Road to Card Magic? That would be a super interesting se session. I probably wanted to do. Um, maybe I go easy on myself and I do something general on misdirection and presentation because these are super valuable and um, um, important topics added with some uh, randomness and stuff like that i guess this is what it's going to be for the uh, upcoming um uh, live sessions i have not um uh, put any um work in it in the way of you know putting thumbnails together and stuff i will do this this week i have a little bit of editing to do for the next um follow-up video on the chicago opener and the uh, patreon exclusive uh, me drinking beer and um playing guitar <laughs> and um and then we keep on doing the live sessions every uh, second tuesday that is i had a blast of a time i hope you had two guys um, you got your um, uh, last five minutes to say what uh, what is left to say, um, and then I'm out of here. Practicing a little bit. 
the Mexican turnover. <clears throat> so crazy challenges. Kind of agree, says misdirection and presentation are, in my, in my opinion, the best chapters in the book. All technique is good, but misdirection is worth its uh, pages uh, uh, is gold, in my opinion. Um, uh, crazy challenges. Who are you on Discord? Are you crazy challenges there, or are you? Who are you? Are you on Discord? And this is another way um, to um, uh, now you, you see this is uh, this is very an angle sensitive. So let me see if I can um, fix this. Just a little bit of you know. Okay, how did it? And then you come back and bring it as a card change. I'm I like I, I like on Discord. All right, yeah, <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Makes kind of sense. There you go. For diamonds, with the um, with the throw, how was it with the throwing technique? It goes like just throw the card, changes right into the ass. But this is just an illusion, right? Card changing routine. Here, here we go. That's what we did. Throw, throw, change. All the motions blend in together, throwing the card. Dallas Taylor, I can only perform tricks on my family members and they don't trust me anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons you shouldn't do that. That's, that's, uh, that's a very difficult performance situation. Yeah, this is this is why um this is why actually Dallas Taylor and that's a, that, that's how I'm closing here today, um uh, because this is a this is actually why um it is um uh, counterproductive to a certain degree to pre performing for family members and friends, um, because um, you're not getting a realistic um, feedback. It's always a distorted feedback, and um, they they don't they don't take you. In the, they don't uh, accept you or they will not take you in the role you need to be so you will not practice to be in the role and then you have the situation they're always burning your their hands or they are more or less bored and they don't want to get into this thing or they are um uh, try to 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 um, bust you or they will just um you know pretend that what you did was the greatest thing you know um and uh the, uh, the, the so getting out um and performing for strangers is the only solution and that's just a um how you say hurdle mm. uh, obstacle we all got to take a hurdle we all got to take and uh, we all got to take again and all over again um, especially if any of you planning a, a professional career right <laughs> Which I wouldn't recommend to do. Doing. Uh, I'm more of a Charlie Chaplin performer. Glenn Andrews writes. That's nice. That's really nice. Um, Charlie Chaplin is uh, is is uh, I very brings very beautiful uh, emotions and uh, uh, images up. I'd say hit them with some self workers and then build a relaxed character to get those off beats you need for slides. Exactly. Exactly. Here are the final keys. Have always have a deck of cards with you, um, set up for um, a simple ace production like the tipsy turvy cards, right at the bottom as a, be a beginner. All you gotta do is shuffle the cards to the top, place them on the table, do the thing. Bang, done. Performed one trick. That's great. Now do, do then, then change one ace into another with what you just learned. You know, practice the and do another one. Easy way. And always and always palm a coin. Always walk palming a coin. Because you never know when you will ah, produce a coin and the people go, oh, I'm a magician. And that's just beautiful. Dennis Taylor, thanks. Thank you so much too, guys. You are rocking awesome. 
Thank you so much for this um, productive session. Uh, gonna hit the uh, Discord saying thank you once again, and then I'm uh, um, out and uh, d done for today. Um, have a, uh, a wonderful two weeks until next time, whatever it's gonna be. Uh, that's gonna be what it is, right? Um, in the meantime, you can rest assured that more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. And once again, all of this going down thanks to the Odmaniacs who make it happen with a pledge on Patreon, which is rocking awesome. Guys, you are rocking awesome. Everybody today, um, thanks for the um, honest and uh, sincere engagement. This is just really, really fun. I love to blend slides and self-workings. Thanks for the stream. Really enjoyed seeing how randomly discovering pages in a book has excited you. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just, man. There's not enough time for all for all of it, actually. <laughs> Do your homework, everyone. Wonderful. Guys, um, if you want to keep on uh, chatting, you know, Discord is uh, open at link in the info box. That's it for me. Bye-bye. Odd Mario's magic. Like and subscribe.